I think when someone decides that they want to get into the sports content world, amongst the many questions you'll have, the biggest one will be, what gear should I buy? That could range from what camera to buy, which lenses are necessary to have, what accessories and tools will help me at the start. And I know that can be very intimidating at first, which is why I'm making this video today in order to help you guys decide what gear you should get when you start off as a sports creative. What's going on guys, Juan back here today with a brand new video and as always very excited to be here with you guys to talk about more sports creative content. If you guys are new to the channel, I'm Juan. I'm a 25 year old sports creative living in Toronto, Ontario, and I'm currently working full time as a sports creative. And I've created this YouTube channel and all these videos in order to help you guys in your sports creative journey. In this video, I'm gonna talk about three different camera kit lists that I've built out at three different price points to help anybody who wants to get started in the sports creative world hit the ground running. We're gonna be talking about your best budget options. If you do not wanna spend a lot of money, we have a mid range option for someone who's willing to invest a little bit more money. And then we have a top tier option, which I like to call the balling out option in terms of if you have the money and you want the best gear right off the bat to start that is what you need to get but keep in mind with all of these like tiers that I have built out here for you guys you're going to be spending some money and I want you guys to understand that buying camera gear is always going to be have to be seen as an investment and not a waste of money all three camera kits are based around gear that I currently use or have used in the past so before you get into the comments and tell me why haven't you mentioned this camera or this lens is a much better option I just want to recommend gear that I've used in the past because I don't like telling people to buy gear that I couldn't personally vouch for. So everything here is something I personally used. I, there are definitely other options for a lot of these things that you can substitute a lot of lenses, a lot of cameras, but I just wanna give you guys the best recommendations based off my experiences and what I've used. And I'm sure down the line, you'll find a lot of other options as well. Trust me, I didn't wanna spend $1,000 when I bought my first camera, but that camera, the a6300 paid itself off entirely and made me more money in the long term so if the prices seem a little bit intimidating i totally understand but just understand that the money you put into the gear whether it's a lens whether it's a monitor whether it's your camera itself will pay itself off big time in the future one more thing regardless of whatever kit you decide to go with whether that's the budget middle tier or the very expensive option if you do want to save some money i would highly recommend whatever gear i talk about try and see if there's a used version at first i know when you're starting off in your creative journey you're probably not making a lot of money so buying used gear does help a lot. Looking for camera gear that's already been used and is in good condition will help you save a lot of money and maybe allow you to spend some of that money that you would have spent on a camera body on something else, maybe like filters or SD cards, storage, etc. The first kit we're going to be talking about is the middle tier, or as I like to call it, the best beginner kit overall. Now, this may not be the budget option. You're going to be spending a little bit more than the budget version I'm going to give you in a few minutes. However, I do think this allows you to get all your bases covered right off the rip as a creative. It'll allow you not just to start, but create quality content content right off the bat with all the gear I'm about to mention. We're gonna get right into it now with the first list, which is the middle tier, the best beginner kit overall. And we're gonna kick it off with the camera. The Sony a6300 or the a6400 are gonna be your best options here. They're essentially the same camera. The a6400 is just the newer version of the a6300, which was the camera that I used for pretty much three years at the beginning of my career. Could not recommend it enough. You can get it for around 900 to $1,000 used. So that's probably your best option. The lens, the Sony 18 to 105 is an amazing lens. Again, a piece of gear that I used for a very long time the most flexible lens for a crop sensor camera you're gonna need audio so we're gonna go with the Rode video mic go as your first microphone option here you're gonna need a tripod as well that's a very underrated piece of gear so the KNF concept tripod is also on this part of the list as well the two to five stop VND by moment now you may debate as to why I might have a VND here like I said this is the middle tier option I want you guys to have the best gear right off the rip in order to create content and I think an ND filter is a really underrated piece of gear especially if you're shooting outside Side, things like football or soccer you're gonna need a vnd in here so if you're gonna get one the two to five stop vnd by moment you, you could get two you could get the six to nine if you can afford it but if you really just need one get the two to five stop vnd would highly recommend it next up is going to be storage and this is where we're going to go with the sandus xt pros i would recommend you get two of these if you can afford it if you can't one is totally fine but i think having two sd cards is great because if one fills up and you you know have to dump footage in the middle of the game you can really quickly replace it with another card and keep recording and keep going up next you're going to need extra batteries and you're going to need a charger for them so we're going to go with the power extra batteries these are basically like knockoff sony batteries i say the word knockoff lightly because they're actually quality batteries you might hear people tell you oh don't 
don't buy like third party batteries. I've used third party batteries my whole career and I've never had a problem. And the official Sony batteries are incredibly expensive. So that's gonna be the option here. Camera bag, we're gonna go with the newer camera bag. I had an Amazon version of this for a while. It's essentially the same bag and it lasted me forever. So the newer camera bag is gonna be the option here. And finally, hard drive. You're gonna need something to dump all your footage in. So we're gonna go with a Seagate two terabyte HDD. An SSD is a lot more expensive. And even though I would always recommend everyone have an SSD, again, in order to keep costs down, we're gonna go with the HDD version here. Price range for this kit is gonna run you anywhere from $2,000 on the low end to upwards of $3,000 on the high end. It really just depends on what gear you're able to get used, what gear you have to buy new, but that's gonna be the rough estimate range for this first kit. This kit is just going to help you and cover every single base you might need when you first set off. You have an excellent camera body in the a6300 or a6400. You have a jack of all trades lens in the 18 to 105. You have a microphone and so many other accessories, which will help you create unbelievable content right off the start. Now I know the price range for this budget is pretty significant, but you don't need to go and buy this all at once. You can buy it in increments. Believe me, when I started off, I didn't have the money for all this either. So I ended up just buying my camera, buying the lens and building everything everything around it over time. This is just kind of a guideline as to what you should be looking to get if you want the best gear to start off right off the bat. Next up, the budget beginner kit. And I think this might be the most popular one out of the three because you're gonna spend the least money possible. You're still gonna spend some money, but just not as much as option one or three. The camera body for this one is gonna stay the same with the A63, A6400. Like I said, you can get that for around 900 to $1,000 to use. It's the most expensive part of the kit. It's the most necessary part of the kit. It is the camera I would recommend to anybody just getting started, I probably wouldn't recommend anything under these two in terms of quality, features, and price. Next up, the Sony 55 to 210 will be the lens of choice here. It replaces the 18 to 105 from the previous kit. It is a lot cheaper. You can get it for around 300 to $400 used. The only thing with it is a variable aperture lens, unlike the F4, which is a fixed aperture. So while you zoom in and zoom out, you're gonna notice the exposure change because the aperture has to change with the focal length. It does suck, but it's a sacrifice you kind of have to make if you want a better zoom lens at a cheaper price. So the 55 to 210 is gonna be the option here. Up next, audio. The microphone is gonna change as well. We're gonna go with the Rode Video Micro instead of the Rode Video Mic Go. You can get this one for around $59. I would probably recommend you can get this one new. I've never really seen it used, but I think audio is important to have regardless of what your budget is. So the Rode Video Micro is gonna be your best choice for audio. SD cards, we're gonna stay the same here. We're gonna go with the Sandus XT Pros. If you really wanna save some money, just get one of them. I would still recommend getting two, but in this case, we're just gonna go with one. You're gonna get the same batteries and charger as the last one because you're gonna need batteries. You're gonna need a charger at some point, so that is essential. You're gonna get a camera bag. Again, another essential thing, you're gonna need something to carry around all your camera gear so the newer camera bag makes an appearance again and then finally you're gonna need something to store all your footage all your content on so we're gonna go back with the seagate two terabyte hdd and that is it for the beginner budget kit it is very bare bones it is very essentials only in order to keep the price down and the price range for this kit can range anywhere from fourteen hundred dollars to eighteen hundred dollars depending on how many pieces you get used how many pieces you get new but that's kind of the price range we're looking at for the beginner budget kit between the two kits the biggest difference is no nd filter you're gonna throw that accessory out the window you don't need it in this case you're going to just expose by cranking the shutter if you need to in a bright environment and the other thing is changing the lens the 18 to 105 will always be my number one most recommended lens for beginners but if you're on a budget the 55 to 210 is a great choice again you make the sacrifice it being a variable aperture lens but at the same time i think it's a better option than keeping your kit lens if you really want to save some money just use your kit lens but uh, i think for the a63 a6400 it's the 16 to 55 millimeter and it's a pretty decent lens but for sports you won't get the range you need especially if you're shooting something like soccer or hockey where people can be on the other end of a rink or the other end of a field so i would still recommend even for the beginner kit consider getting a secondary lens in this case the 55 to 210 is your best option so if you don't have a lot of money to spend and you want to get your foot through the door this is the kit i would recommend you're going to save some money you're going to cut some corners but you're still going to be able to create quality content with this gear and if you decide you want to invest more down the line you can always look at the best beginner kit as a guideline as to what to get next after you get these bare essentials. Last but certainly not least is option number three, which is the balling out beginners kit. This is basically your go big or go home option for beginners. If money is not an issue, if you want to ball out and get the best possible gear to start off, this is the gear list you want to look at. I've cut no corners here. There's extra accessories. You're going to upgrade a lot of pieces. This is basically if you want to have the best 
best of the best gear as a beginner creative. First off, the camera. I would still recommend looking at the a6300 or the a6400. Fantastic camera. However, this is the go big or go home option. So I'm also gonna suggest you could look at the Sony a7 III. This is a full frame camera. This is one of the best cameras in its price group. I would still recommend looking for it used, however, because used, it'll run you from around $1,800 to $2,000, which is a lot more expensive. But like I said, this is the one situation if money is not a problem, that is the camera I would suggest for beginners if money is just not an option and you wanna go really, really big at the start. Next up, lenses. And I'm gonna talk about two of them. The 18 to 105 makes a return on this list. I, uh, this is a no brainer. If money is an option, get this one. It'll serve you so well for a long time. I kept mine for years, but after that, I'm going to recommend also the Sony 70 to 200. It is my pretty much my go to lens in most sports situations. It is the one lens I would go with if I can only use one for the rest of my life in sports. I would recommend getting it used because it can get very pricey on a brand new end. You can get it brand new for $1799, but you can find options used for $1300 to $1500 which will save you a lot of money, but it is a pretty much a must have lens in my opinion for any sport creative when you get to that point. Next up, the microphone we're going with is the Rode VideoMic NTG. I absolutely love this thing. This is the one I've been using for the last year or two. Excellent audio quality. So many little settings and features on this microphone. A little bit more expensive than the other two I mentioned at $329.99, but totally worth it for crispy and high quality audio. Next up, filters. And we're not gonna get just one, we're gonna get two here. We're gonna go from the two to five and the six to nine moment VND filters. VND filters are non-negotiable when you're shooting outdoor sports. You need to get these if money is not an issue. And also, I'm going to throw in a 10% Cinebloom Moment filter in there. I think diffusion filters are unbelievable accessories to have. I love the stylized look they give your footage. So I'm going to throw that in there. The 10% is probably the best middle ground from the 5 or the 20%. It's not too strong. It's not too weak. and makes your footage look a lot more cinematic as much as I hate using that word. And it just gives such a unique look to your footage. I pretty much use the diffusion filter most of the time while I'm shooting. SD cards, we're gonna upgrade here as well. We're gonna go with the ProGrade V90s. This is the 128 gigabyte version. This runs a little bit more expensive than the previous ones. It's $118, but you're future-proofing yourself. These are V90 cards. These are some of the best in their class. And eventually, if you choose to upgrade to something like a Sony a7S III or something that shoots 10-bit 422, you're gonna need V90s. So just by getting these, you're future-proofing yourself significantly. Batteries and charger, we're gonna go with that Power Extra brand. Again, just the best bang for your buck. You don't really need to get the Sony batteries, even though money isn't an issue, these are just fine. And then we're gonna move on to the camera bag, which is the in-case DSLR Pro Pack. I've used this camera bag religiously for the last three years. It is incredible, so much storage space. I cannot rave about this bag enough. I made a camera bag video before. I'll link it down in the description for you guys to see. Cannot recommend that bag literally enough. Next up, hard drive. We're gonna go from an HDD to an SSD. This is the Samsung T7. I use this every single day to edit my footage. It is incredibly fast if you guys aren't familiar with SSDs. They are much, much better than HDDs to work off. So the T7 is the option here. I literally do not leave home without it. Next up, tripod. We're gonna keep going with the KNF Concept One that I mentioned before. I haven't had to upgrade my tripod in years. This does the job, so no reason for me to recommend something more expensive or more intricate to you guys. Finally, and this is optional, get a gimbal. In this case, I'm gonna recommend the DJI Ronin RSC2. I know I've made a video before as to why I don't like gimbals, but I still think it's a very useful thing for a creative to have. It still comes in handy for me on some occasions, so I'm gonna recommend it to you guys as an optional add-on for this gear kit. And the price range for this one is definitely the most expensive as you're probably gonna spend $4,000 to $5,000 if you decide to go with these options. But like I said, this is your go big or go home, all or nothing option. This is if you wanna dive right into the deep end of the pool and get started right away. You're gonna spend a lot of money, but you're gonna get the best things in order to get started. I also made sure that within these options, you're future-proofing all your gear to a certain degree, all while keeping it under the $5,000 range, which is, I think, the absolute ceiling a beginner should spend if they can, because anything more than that for a beginner, you might realize you might not like this. So try to keep your budget under 5,000, even if money is not an issue, just in case one point you decide you don't want to do this anymore. At least you recoup some of your money under the $5,000 mark. The big ticket items here are obviously the 70 to 200 and the Sony a7 III as the biggest changes. The 70 to 200, I've said before, is the best lens to shoot sports with bar 
bar none. So that's a non-negotiable if you want to get the best of the best. And the a7 III is an incredible upgrade from the a6400 and the a6500 being a full frame camera. I know this may not be the most popular option just because of the price, but don't write it off entirely because I think it's a really good guideline as to what you can upgrade to in the future when you really want to get into this line of work more. So if you decide you want to upgrade your camera, you can look at this and say, I could probably get the a7 III instead of getting a7S III. And among things like that, there's accessories here that are really useful for taking your filmmaking to another level. So like I said, you don't have to do it, but don't write it off entirely. Keep these in the back of your mind as things you could potentially upgrade to in the future. Keep in mind, this is just a guide for you and your filmmaking needs. This is just gear I would recommend at different price points. So don't take this to heart. Don't be mad at me for suggesting you spend four to $5,000. These are just recommendations if you're looking to start off as to what gear you can get at different price points. And at the end of the day, no matter if you start with the budget one, you go with the middle tier one, or you go with the balling out all in version, no matter what, this is all gear that I've used in the past and I would highly recommend it has helped me take my filmmaking and content game to a whole new level. And hopefully for you guys, it has the same effect. If you guys are interested in any of the gear I talked about, I'm going to link it all down below in the description for you guys to find easily. I'm going to probably make a few Amazon storefronts just to present it in each different gear category. So you guys can really find what you need quickly and easily, as well as a few other links to moments and a few other places where you can find this gear for yourself. If you guys got to this point in the video, thank you guys so much for watching. And if it helped you, if you found it interesting at all, remember to like and subscribe because it would really help support me and the channel. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I would love to hear what gear you guys are thinking of buying. If you guys have any questions, I'm happy to interact with you guys down in the comment section below. That's going to do it for today's video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.